we behold him and his glory gets on us. Holy Ghost of God in the earth today. Holy Ghost of God in the earth today. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstraught. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. Tonight, I'm going to be saying some things. Can you imagine that? Yes. It's kind of my job. I get things to say and then I have to say them. If I don't say them, I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. If I do say them, no matter who's in the room, right? Mm -hmm. I get paid. <laughs> yeah. If if I don't say them, then I don't get paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am set for the destruction of many things including many of the things that you may hold near and dear joel chapter 2 verse 3 says a fire devours before them and behind them a flame burns well what would be with them then if a fire's devouring before them and behind them a flame burns then they're kind of part of the flame aren't they mm -hmm sounds like destruction but that same fire that destroys will be the same fire that you walk in say it's the same fire, same same fire. fire. I, walk in. I walk in well speaking these words tonight if you can hear them will be blowing on the embers of a fire now if possible i will attempt to avoid certain and numerous religious thoughts and pitfalls that plague this kind of message i've been here before i'm going to try not to fall into those pits with you and your religious thinking because there's a lot of it there I kind of liken it to throwing uncooked spaghetti at a wall doesn't stick Psalms 104 verse 1 O Lord my God thou art very great who covers thyself with light as with a garment Say he covers himself, he covers himself. With, light with light as with a garment. With a garment. So what does God wear? Light. light. He, he wears his clothes are made out of light. Yep. Are you here? Mm -hmm. He wears light. Light clothes for springtime? <laughs> no, light clothes. <laughs> Clothes himself with light as with a garment. How about you? you're made in God's image mm -hmm. say I'm made in God's image, I'm made in God's image. where are your clothes you should be clothed with light as with a garment mm -hmm. get a hold of this this is where we're going say this is where I'm going, where I'm going. you were created in his image were you not yes. Jesus is a good example here Matthew chapter 17 and verse 1 and after six days Jesus taketh Peter James and John his brother and brings them up say brings them up, brings them up. into a high mountain apart so he took them apart from other people and he took them up mm -hmm. verse 2 and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light he was transfigured he changed his face shone and his clothes shone white as the light mm -hmm. sounds like god who clothes himself with light 
in Luke chapter 9 verse 29 it says the fashion of his countenance was changed or altered his raiment became white and glistening he Jesus entered into something different obviously he entered into something different something that changed him and clothed him with light is this okay mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1 and seriously stay with me don't get all caught up in religious thinking I'm not gonna try to touch on everything in the parabolic meaning of this ten virgins parable I only have two things to bring out say two things, two things. all the other things you can do with every whatever else you want to do with it I'm not touching that today not gonna touch it I could but I don't have time and then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins right yep. mm -hmm. well the virgins means this <laughs> which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom right mm -hmm. just stay with it ten virgins they took their lamps and they went to meet the bridegroom verse 5 while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made say there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go out to meet him and then all the virgins arose and they trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out it says they're gone out but it, they they were worried basically that they were going to go out mm -hmm. they didn't bring extra oil they just had some in there are you here yeah but the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves verse 10 and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut we all know the story right we all probably have all of these ideas that we were taught about it Two things I want to bring out it said the call came for them to get up and go mm -hmm. yep. the call came for them to go and meet the bridegroom who's the bridegroom in this instance Jesus right yep. so they had to do something they had to get up and go out and meet the bridegroom was the bridegroom with them no. at the time he was not that would make no sense they wouldn't get up and go anywhere he would have already been there right. so the call came to them that he is coming which means he was not there a lot of people were liking oh they would go down this whole list of things how this this means the church and these people were filled with the Holy Ghost and these people were not filled with the Holy Ghost and they were not, you know, go, go on and on and on but they missed the point that Jesus is not there he is coming and a call went forth to get ready and go meet him you get ready and prepare yourself to go meet him without him there right, right. Yes. and this is a hard truth for many but one that must be fully say fully fully accepted and embraced if you are to go up and meet him number two they said give us some oil in verse 9 but the wise answered saying not so lest there not be enough for us and for you but go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves what they say they said go back and get some more oil that's the message in the church today we need more oil we need to go and get some more oil go get some more oil get some more anointing there's always more anointing you got to go and get some more that's not the solution that's not what you're called to do you're called to arise trim and shine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. arise and shine because there's no end to the amount of anointing you can have you can develop in that and develop in that and develop in it but it never goes here 
to those that are not willing to go on the message remains go back and get more oil where's the church today same place go back and get more go back and get more the old time revival we had that we need more anointing just like they had back then go back God's message is never go back his message is rise and shine that was the whole point of the lamp all of them rose up trimmed their lamps but they refused to light it but it's always that their message you need more you need more you need more oil you need more anointing and it's never enough but for those of us who are going on said going on the call has come the call listen the call has come the call has come forward it's time to arise and shine arise and light light your lamp arise and light your lamp arise first and then light there's an order arise and shine does that remind you of a scripture mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 60 let's look at it Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee verse 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee verse 3 and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising say the brightness, the brightness of, thy rising. of thy rising you're rising and you get brighter say I could get brighter, I could get brighter. <laughs> yes you could the brightness of thy rising you arise and then shine and all the good things begin to come to you say I arise I, arise, I, shine, I shine and all the good things, the good things come, to me. come to me that's the order that's what the scriptures say you arise first let me help you out Acts chapter 2 let's look at verse 1 Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 have we, have we read this before yes. and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a what a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire sat upon each of them and they all began to speak with unknown tongues what came before the fire a sound the sound was first and then the fire and we understand that fire especially in that day is how light is made they were talking about fire they were talking about light that's how they made light in a room you would have a fire we are shifting from sound into let there be light we're shifting from sound to let there be light remember Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and God said let there be light and there was light what came first the sound. the sound him saying something him saying something came first say him saying something, saying something. Came, first. came first and then came the light mm -hmm. we arise and shine the arising has to do with sound this is the pattern this is the rising if you don't have the saying part right the let there be part you never get to 
to the light part what has to come first the sound the saying part has to come first if you're going to arise and light or arise and shine then the arising has to do with the things you say and the shining has to do with the light that comes from it if you don't get the saying part right you never get to the shining part people don't like it this plain they'd rather it be a little more religious that way they can ignore it most of the church still gropes around in the dark like blind people refusing to speak but for those of you who do speak God's words and especially those of you who have learned to speak the words I worship you Holy Ghost and then to speak and walk with him by speaking in agreement with his words an irreversible change begins to take over you comes upon you something that shall never be taken away light replaces darkness and a fire burns away the chaff you enter into and become a part of a light-based society light-based economy light-based currency a kingdom of light say a kingdom of light, kingdom of light. created for light-based creatures this is where you were designed to live can you hear the call come forth I set the climate I make the change second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit remember we're getting ready we're preparing we're arising and shining now the Lord is not Jesus because we're being prepared to go and meet are you here yes. now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass or mirror the glory of the Lord of spirits are changed into the same image into the same image into the same image from glory to glory or brightness to brightness even as by the Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit Lord now the Lord is that spirit beholding the glory which is his light we are changed into the same image can you be changed into that image if you're not beholding him we go from brightness to brightness in order to have an image in a mirror there must be light he is clothed himself with light as with a garment there are doors you must walk through scriptures by which you must enter speaking there are doors you must walk through scriptures by which you must enter speaking this scripture is one now the Lord is that spirit say now the Lord is, now the Lord is that, spirit. that spirit if you knew him as the Spirit Lord you would worship him wouldn't you and then you can behold him his brightness and be changed by beholding him worshiping him and speaking in agreement with his words the spoken word must become light to you let it transform you let it make you the thing said Colossians 4 4 says that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak Ephesians 5 13 says whatever makes manifest is light this 
is exactly how you arise and shine this is how you arise and shine let's look at Isaiah 60 again you find it look at it says arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is upon you we behold him and his glory gets on us if you're not beholding him the Holy Ghost the Spirit Lord his glory can't get on you verse 1 says arise and shine go back one verse we're in chapter 60 verse 1 go back one verse look at this Isaiah 59 verse 21 my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth his words won't depart out of your mouth what's that mean they're in your mouth his words are in your mouth 60 verse 1 arise and shine you never get to the shine without arising by having his word in your mouth his word in your mouth is how you arise Psalms 112 verse 3 says wealth and riches shall be in my house each brick will be built out of a single flame of fire that comes out of your mouth and you shall be clothed with light like God the Holy Ghost is as with a garment arise and shine keep saying it until it gets on you and changes your countenance you have arisen and then you begin to shine Holy Ghost I thank you that these people have been blessed by these words and things have fallen off of them says the Spirit Lord things that were trying to hold them back religious things that kept them back for years have fallen off and they are beginning and able to step into the new age of the Holy Ghost worshiper and be blessed by the living God and the great things that he has for you in this day in this hour in Jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost I worship you you are the living God you richly provide me with all things for my enjoyment I say these words and I arise in them and begin to shine in Jesus name amen the father is in heaven Jesus at his right